So at, at age 15, I ran 840, I think, for, for 3,000 metres. Um, that I think at the time it was an Irish record as an under 15 athlete or a 15 year old. So I had good underage um, athletic performances and then I was in a car crash in 1992, February 1992, I got hit while out training and that really put an end then to my running career. The place that I grew up in was a little small parish called Kilcarely, just in the outskirts of Dundalk. And for a sporting point of view, there wasn't really much going on there, bar football and running. So I done both, and a bit of a set dancing as well. It's a form of Irish dancing. So that's how I really got into it. My two sisters were in the running club, and I sort of tagged along. And then I probably got more into it than they did. I was out training on the main road, and I got hit by a car there, and that was it. It was like I had a fractured skull, but it was it was mainly head injuries, injuries to the brain. It was it was most of it, like a lot of scarring and and that, but and a lot of injuries throughout the body. But it was ongoing issues that I had from the accident that that prevented me from going back into it. Um, I didn't really get back running for about five years, and I was just in and out of the sport then for years, but never recaptured anything like I had at my underage. I tried to get back in my 20s and that, but I didn't have the same natural talent I had before the accident. Like it, it came very natural to me when I was six, 15, 16, 17. I didn't have to train. I think I, I won the score irons on maybe one day a week's training. You know, it, just, it was just stuck on this pair of spikes and that was it, you, you won. But in 2012, I got back and I came third in, in the National Senior Cross Country Championships and I ran 49, 49 for 10 mile in the road. I was sort of happy enough with that. That was sort of an indication that I, I still have a little bit of talent there, but I wasn't prepared to push myself any more than four or five days a week training, and I was still enjoying life and that. And you know, it wasn't going to interfere with my weekends and going out and enjoying a few pints and that. And it was only probably in the last 18 months that I really cut all that out and solely focused on my running and really went for it. I was basically up to my de up to my neck in death, so I basically turned to the roads to road running, and I started running races and picking up money for cash just to basically survive and keep the wolf from the doors, as say. And I was running sometimes three races on a weekend and not being able to run or train during the week because I'd be so tired. So I might run a marathon or a half marathon on one weekend alone. I think there was one point I ran six marathons in six weekends, you know, just, just completely destroying the body. But I was going up and I was picking up checks of a thousand euro or 500 euro or 1200 euro and things like that. Just basically to try and cover the mortgages and the, the massive um, mortgage bill that I faced each month. So that was one of the reasons that I really had to knock the social life on the head and basically get out there and run and try and keep a roof over me. And then the f six months later, I. I trained for Dublin and I was actually probably in the best shape I, I was ever in leading into Dublin in 2016 and I went over my ankle after four mile and I decided to finish on the marathon. I never trained as hard as I did for that. Um, so I was really out for about five months with that, in, with that ankle injury. When I was off for such a long layoff, I just decided, right, if I get back into this again and this injury fully clears up, I'm gonna go for Dublin and I'm gonna try and be the first Irishman home. I knew from about mile 16, 17 I was going to win it. So it was, it was a good feeling then and I remember with about a mile or two miles to go somebody said to me the national title is only 20 yards ahead you know because I closed up the gap and it was it was a great feeling and I was just buzzing coming up the last mile when I started doing okay on the roads and started winning events um, just a lot of people started asking me to coach them and that and I just got into it that way. Get as much enjoyment as somebody I coach running a PB as I do myself. You know it is, it's probably the ultimate thrill is running at a personal best yourself but when your athletes just run phenomenal times and you're ringing you up and they're on a, on a high from it, there's no better feeling. <laughs> 